everybody Conan here, and we're back to working on the dashboard. Last time we coated the whole thing in resin. Oh, last time we ripped everything off, covered uh, the defroster vents, which I wasn't perfectly clear with that last time. I'm covering the defroster vents on this dashboard because this dashboard goes into a car that has a roll cage, which means it has no blower, so there's no point in that defroster being there. Um, he does not have the vents for the car. Nobody typically does because they they crack and get as crappy looking as the dashboards. Somebody actually had a great suggestion that I should lay some aluminum foil in there, make a mold of the actual defroster vent area, and make an insert piece. That's a great idea. I will probably do that in the future. Uh, not in the case of this one because, well, we're already this far along. And this piece is kind of a one-off. Uh, you can see that the corners here are cut. These are notched for the roll cage. I'm even covering these vents as well. This one's pretty much completely gone. That looks like the cage will come up into here. So, like I said, that's kind of a one-off deal. We won't have to worry about that. In the future, I've got another one over here ready to go. This one's going to be just a, uh, this one's just going to be a regular stock dashboard. And you can see what I mean about keeping this area in the stock shape is a challenge, but I'll worry about that on the next one. So where are we? Now I'm faced with trying to smooth this thing out, uh, but the number one concern is these. I've got to figure out how to put back here. I'm going to cut this back as well. See the holes here is where it mounts. It's the only place this particular dashboard is going to mount in the car, so it's important that I get these to be usable. Originally, I was planning on notching these out into a square shape and kind of filling it in, you know, just kind of boxing it off in there and filling that whole boxed area in with suede. Um, now I'm thinking that's probably not going to be feasible. This is completely set now. It's been, it's been a few days since I did that step. And it's still pretty weak, so I don't think I want to completely cut out that square. What I'm thinking I might do now is drill from the backside through the face in a line that would be accessible in my car. So basically, as if I was drilling from this plane, this, this flat place here, which is gonna go through here and probably make a hole about here so that you can put the screw down in there. And I think the hole, the circle, would be much easier to deal with. So that's what I'm gonna try and work on now. Okay, so I tried to drill a hole and it just didn't quite come out as I wanted. Uh, the fiberglass actually feathers out, as you might expect if you use a drill on it. So what I ended up doing was just using a knife to cut out a rough square that can be cleaned up later, but uh, just enough of an area that I know the bolt can pass through, and then once I get closer to actually suading it, I'll figure out how to get the, the squares to be, well, square. So now begins the process of using my DA sander to knock down the resin to a acceptable level. Uh, it doesn't need to be perfect, but it needs to be better than it is right now. But basically I just want to knock down the highs and kind of reveal where the low areas are so that we can work on them in filler. Alrighty, well, some initial sanding is done. I uh, hit it with 100. I actually stepped down to a 60 for some of the rougher areas. And you can pretty much see now what I was talking about, about the highs and lows. There's going to be some areas like this that didn't even get touched. But that's okay. I don't want to dig too deep into the resin. And really, you don't really want to spend too much time sanding the resin because it's so, it's so hard that it just demolishes the sandpaper. Alright, so next up is the filler. That will be tomorrow. I have exhausted the time I had available for today. So, yep, that's going to be the next step. Hopefully that will be pretty easy, but uh, I don't want to get, I don't, I'm not focused on getting it, like, perfect. Because I'm going to sway over everything, so don't hide a lot of imperfections. 
So to start out, I'm using a fiberglass reinforced filler, which actually has loose fiberglass strands in it. Uh, I'm going to use it to kind of blend in where the the fiberglass portion of the of the dash goes into the purely resin coated part of the dash, as um, I really think that it adds a bit of strength to that section that could be weak. I actually have seen one crack somewhere in the areas where the fiberglass stops, and I think that this will help with that. Uh, but other than that area, I'm just going to use a nice thin filler, not uh, not your off-the-shelf regular Bondo because that stuff gets so hard and it's very hard to work with. Uh, if you go with something like a Evercoat Gold or anything that's kind of the higher grade fillers, you'll find that it's much easier to work with. When it comes to this, I'm kind of an over-applier. I tend to put way more material on there than necessary. Uh, it's not really that important to get it to be like pristine smooth, but whenever I start doing this, I just kind of get into that, that mode where, uh, like I'm doing body work, it needs to be perfect. But uh, it is important to remember we are, our end goal here is to suede flock this dashboard. And the actual suede material is uneven length, like all the fibers are different lengths. So it does a great job at hiding small imperfections in the dash. Uh, the biggest thing is to get any any real sharp edges gone because those will be noticeable. So now, once again, using the dual action sander to knock down the extra filler and start smoothing it out. Uh, there are some parts that need to be done by hand, like the curve above the, the cluster and some of the tighter areas. But I try to use the, the dual action as much as possible because it seems to leave a very nice level surface and uh, limits the amount of block sanding. Alrighty, the wait is finally over. I am done sanding. I am done filling. I think I have it as good as it's going to get. For whatever reason, this one was probably the most difficult one I've ever done as far as getting it smooth and getting it even. It's still not all the way there, but like I keep telling myself, it's, uh, it's suede flocking. I'm not painting this thing, so it doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, the suede will hide most of the defects, and uh, it's still an experiment. So if it doesn't come out perfect, I have a built-in excuse. So now what? I got a table behind me of all of my stuff. This is way more organized than I've ever been in my whole life, so don't get confused and think that this is how I live. Uh, let me grab the camera. Okay, so we got sweet material, paint roller. The foam ones work really well from what I've experienced in the past. I got a paintbrush if I need it. I like to use it as little as possible to not have brush strokes. Canister for the gun. That's this guy. Got two things of adhesive. Probably only needed one. Uh, there's the actual gun itself. Some masking tape for the end of this because I gotta cover. Oh, I gotta cover the end of it when I'm filling it. Uh, and there's the air compressor line, and I think that is all that I will need, or at least I hope. Now from here, it's kind of a frantic process. I'm gonna be running around trying to get the same piece of font as fast as I can, and then getting the suede all loaded in the gun and start spraying because it's it's a short time period. I've I've been putting this off for a week now because I haven't had any cool nights. It's finally like barely in the low 70s tonight and the humidity's only like 99%. So hopefully I can get it all down before it dries, uh, but it's, it's a race. If there's anything that would make this process easier, it would be a better adhesive. Never been really happy with how this stuff reacts. It's kind of like oil paint is how I would uh, describe it. It dries real quick, it's real glossy, I would prefer it to be flat. Um, but if, if there's anything else that you can think that I could use, uh, let me know. I don't really know. I haven't figured everything else out, so that's 
So I continue to use a couple of the kits. Uh, anything else? Nope. Let's get started. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and load up the canister. Make sure it's all kind of loose. You don't want any clumps in there or anything. As little clumps as possible. The humidity is what really fights me on this. It really makes it want to clump. I'm going to fill it not all the way up. Probably about a third of the way to half of the way. Because if it's a little bit full, it doesn't seem to work as well. Alright, now from here on out, it's probably going to be too noisy for me to do any. Uh, and again, I'm talking, so I will just switch over to post commentary. You're on uh, until we're done, pretty much. Because I gotta get the compressor going and I gotta put a dryer on it, which basically is constantly letting air out, so you'll be able to hear a darn thing. Okay, so now begins the frantic process of applying adhesive to the entire dashboard and uh, doing it in a super timely manner so it doesn't start setting up. The trick I've used is to put more on than you think you possibly need because uh, it, it gets real tacky at a certain thickness. Like if it's real thin on there, like, you know, it's, it's covered, it, you can see the black on it, but it's not thick enough, it doesn't seem to get tacky. Uh, so I put it on as thick as it will possibly go on there without making runs. Uh, it's pretty much inevitable that I, I forget spots in it and have to panic and throw some more on there as I'm clocking. This go around I actually used the roller for the entire the entire uh, process of putting the glue on there and it seems to have worked better. Uh, you'll see I actually used the end of it to kind of dab some spots that need a little extra but uh, it definitely works better than using the brush because there was no strokes in it at all and uh, it just seems to go on a lot smoother. For the record I used about well pretty much exactly half of the 8 ounce can to to do the adhesive on this dashboard. But now it is time to load up the gun. I already have the fibers in there from before. Uh, like I said, about about a third of the way full to halfway. Uh, I, I have the compressor set to around 15 to 20 pounds. Seems to be pretty much the sweet spot. So using the gun is pretty similar to using a paint gun. You know, you just pull the trigger and out come fibers. Uh, the perfect world would be that you could just use it like evenly as a as a paint gun and just go across it uh, but in the case of an area this big I end up shaking it to get more fibers to come out and using gravity to get the fibers to lay down on there uh, you can see that I did indeed need to do some touch-ups along the way of adding adhesive uh, but I'm putting a, just a real heavy coat over everything letting gravity pull the fibers down trying not to aim the gun directly at the dashboard uh, but just kinda have the fibers settle on there using a bright light here to inspect and make sure that I got fibers over all of the adhesive. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. Okay, so now for the really stressful part. We gotta wait. Probably about 12 hours, 24 hours is probably the safest, but in this heat, 12 hours will do. Before we can flip this thing and knock off all the extra fibers and see what actually stuck. But overall, I think it went pretty well. Uh, just judging my previous experiences, it looks, the coverage looks really good. And uh, it looks smooth. I don't see any issues with the with the filling of it. So once again, I probably went a little more crazy with that and carried away. Uh, the holes came out really good. This one's a little iffy. I didn't get as much slate in there as I would have liked. But overall, I think we're looking good. Okay. Well, it's actually been a full day since I laid down the suede fibers. Uh, some stuff has settled on here. Looks like some like grass clippings or bugs or something. Uh, hopefully they're just sitting on the, the fibers that are loose instead of in the glue. <sighs> but this is the nerve wracking part. I'm gonna flip it over, you're gonna see a ton of fibers come out of it, and uh, hopefully enough stuff. I'm gonna try and not touch any part of the dashboard that is covered, uh, especially the noticeable parts, because I don't want them to get matted. All right, well, bad news. This one did not come out. This is my second ever failure on the suede flocking. Uh, it's kind of hard to see on camera. Well, that's actually a pretty good angle right there. You see how you can see through the fibers real easy there? And you actually see the reflection of the light? That is not good. 
So you can see up along here, it looks much worse on camera than it does in person, but up here, this is what it should look like. Uh, over here, that looks pretty good all through there. Uh, the sides look pretty much fine. Uh, I missed a lot up in here, and just overall, the whole top, this whole section through here. Uh, I mean, I can feel it, there's, there's suede on there, but it's just not quite thick enough to, to hide enough the adhesive. Uh, this is again what I was talking about before, where the adhesive is glossy, and that is pretty much what ruins the look of it. Uh, if we don't hide enough of the adhesive, it shows up real easy. If I had a flat adhesive, meaning not glossy, or a clear adhesive that I could just paint the dash, you know, a flat black, uh, it wouldn't be a problem. But now I've got to sand the whole thing down and try and start over. Hopefully I have enough material. Okay, so once again, applying the adhesive, uh, pretty much the same as last time, putting it on as thick as I can possibly get it on there. Didn't really worry about getting it done as quickly this time, I really focused on getting it all nice and even. I noticed there was some weird light spots in it, but uh, as, much, as much adhesive as I would try to put down those spots, it still wouldn't get any, any darker looking or any thicker, uh, so I, I think it's just unsanded suede, like there was extremely short pieces of suede still on the dashboard in those spots, uh, and that's why it appeared that way. So now on to the actual suede flocking part, and uh, this time I'm using a little bit different of a technique. Uh, I'll explain that in a little bit more detail later, but uh, it's very hard to see if you're doing this part correct or not because of the way the fibers kind of lay on each other. You can't really tell if the fibers are getting pushed into the adhesive, or if they're just sitting on there like uh, cross-haired over each other and not really digging down into the adhesive. So the main thing I tried to do different was really, really aim at the dashboard and try and get those fibers to penetrate into the adhesive. what would spray more fibers uh, without shaking it around because I felt like that just kind of threw a bunch on there and it clumped and it didn't get on there <laughs> and it didn't uh, didn't get a chance to stick so I feel like when I actually had the gun yeah when I actually had the gun I was able to just kind of do it in a panning motion where I'd be going like this barely pushing down on the trigger so just barely hitting it. Uh, it it seemed like it was actually like shooting the fibers into the glue rather than letting the fibers settle on the glue. That seems to have pretty much taken care of the, uh, the thinning issues. All right, so now you can see much better coverage. Uh, it definitely still looks worse on camera than it does uh, in person. Like it shows through a little bit more, like the, the differences in it. Uh, it looks much smoother in person, uh, but that doesn't matter. It is suede, so as you touch it, 
and you like put your hand across it and stuff like that, it will, you know what Sway does, it leaves like fingerprints and marks in it, uh, and you can see all the places it's been touched and things like that. Uh, you can quote unquote reset it if you take a air compressor and spray it, uh, it'll straighten out all the fibers and it'll be smooth again. But overall, overall I am very pleased. Uh, yeah, like the, it's very strange, I'm looking at the screen of the camera and I'm looking at the dash at the same time, and you can see the bright spot here. I can't see that at all in person. <laughs> uh, it's very strange. Okay, so I took it out of the direct light of the fluorescent there, and now it, now it shows a little bit better uh, what it actually looks like. Let me try and get the camera in close. So there is what it actually looks like. It's a very thin layer of suede fibers. Uh, that coats the whole thing, and what's really great about it when you uh, when you get the suede to lay down correctly, anyway, it does hide many of the imperfections, uh, like the hardly even see them, but the the holes that I have for the bolts and the dash, uh, you hardly even notice them when you're looking at it from a distance. Which I mean, really, this is as close as you're ever going to be to it in the car. Uh, here's the spot where I was talking about that it's a little bit messed up. Alright, just didn't didn't get any adhesive right there, so I'll have to touch that up. Not a big deal. Alrighty, well this wraps up our project here, our first project on Cohen's Garage. I hope you have enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun for me. It's uh, it's very different than anything I've ever done before, uh, working on camera and stuff like that. On screen now is kind of my rough tally of what the final cost of the project is, in case you were wondering. Uh, now for me, I have a lot of leftover materials for stuff like the fiberglass and the resin, the filler, uh, but other than that, the uh, the flocky material, I used every bit of that. That is the 8 ounce can and the smallest of the, of the fiber bags. Well, I actually used more fibers than, uh, than that. I had some leftover for my redo, so if you if you want to try this on your own, you might you might want to get the bigger the bigger adhesive and the bigger bag of fibers to give yourself a couple redos. Uh, but overall, I would say try and set yourself a hundred dollars aside if you want to tackle this project. You could probably do it for less, but yeah, you don't want to get trapped into oh no, I don't have enough money to finish this thing now because uh, strange things happen as we have seen. If you'd like to see some pictures of the dashboard once we finally get it mounted into the car that it belongs to, uh, I will post some of those on my Twitter account when the time comes. Uh, that's at Conedodger240. But uh, other than that, I think that's a wrap for our first project here on Cone's Garage. I hope you enjoyed. I hope I can do more of these in the future. And as always, thanks for watching.